Hello, and welcome to Dickinson's Real Deal. On this show, I help members of the public get the very best price for their antiques and valuables. You get a choice. Sit down with one of our regular dealers. They're going to try and buy your treasures off you today for cash on the spot. 80. I told you started with the wrong colour money. You don't want that, that's, the, that's all I've got. I'm a very poor man. If I don't think that's enough money, I'm going to say reject that, gamble, and place the same goods into an auction and hope to get a little bit more money there. I will be on hand at all times to help and advise members of the public. Today, the show comes to you from the Leeds Armoury. There's a huge crowd of people here. They've been here since earlier this morning. They are determined to do business. They want to walk away with cash in their pocket or gamble and go to auction. But either way, they want the real deal. First today is Helen Gardner. Will she be sweet on this little pair? Your name is? It's Marie. Marie, I'm Helen. Pleased, Pleased to, to meet you. you. And, um, can't keep my eyes off your Clara's Cliff here. So you brought in some Clara's Cliff. Yes. Uh, is it yours or...? It belongs to my mother-in-law and she's had them for about 15 years. Oh. Um, but just been stuck in a box at home and we thought it would be an ideal opportunity to bring them today to see how much they're worth. They're quite stylish and of course Clara's mm. Cliff is very collectible. Her style started a huge trend mm. and a uh, very clever lady. Unfortunately, this, this little sugar bowl has been broken. Yes, it has. Which yes. is very sad. Yes. Because it's been broken quite badly and stuck together. Mm. But the jug is charming. Well, they both are charming if you like mm. Art Deco. And this is pure Art Deco. Mm. Do you know what you want for this, Clarice Cliff Marie? I have an idea. So if I put some money on the table, make a start, but I don't know if I'll buy it or not. Okay. It maybe do better in auction. Okay. I'm not sure. Okay. Okay, if I put £20 down, £30 down, because I'm really only buying one piece. No, expecting more than £30. Pounds. More than that? Definitely. A lot more than that? Yes. How about £40? No, definitely not. No? A bit harder? A lot harder. Oh, a lot harder. Well, there it is, ooh, yes, £50. No, no. £60 for your Clarice Club? Not at all. No. How about £65 for your one piece of Clara's Club? I was expecting a little bit more. Here's David. 65 on the table. We've got a 60 to 90. We have an 80 to 120 as the estimations. The problem, I think, our dealer faces, the damaged one, can be restored. And to send that away and have it restored probably will cost another... 40 or 50 quid, and I might be conservative because all these specialists work on about 20 or 30 pounds an hour. I think they are worth a little bit more, but I'm not going to guarantee it to no, you, but no. I'm going to say I think they're worth a little bit more. Talk to Helen. If she gives more, you can think again. If not, they may be worth a gamble. Well, Marie, now there was a nice piece of advice. What do you think? I'd like to see a little bit more. A little bit more. A little more. bit more, well, please. OK, Marie, I'm going to... This is it. I'm taking okay. away the five. OK. I'm putting down a ten. That is me totally finished. I'll take that. You're going to take my I'll deal? take that, please. You pushed me for that other five, you. you certainly <laughs> did. Well done, Many Marie. Thanks. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Thank you. Good, good deal. Thank, Thank you. you very Many much. thanks. <laughs> In view of what David said, it seemed a reasonable deal to take rather than go to auction because we, couldn't have, we wouldn't have been guaranteed to get a higher offer than what Helen had offered. So, fantastic, yeah. Came, came home with £70. What more could I expect? And that's just how we like it. Well done. Next, we're with Debbie Circle. But her diamonds this girl's best friend? Liz, thanks so much for coming on the show. Thank you. Tell me a little bit about this ring that you brought in today. It was my mother's ring, but she passed away a few years ago, so I've decided I don't 
wants to wear it, so I'll get it sold. Yeah. And do you know what the metal is that it's made of? Uh, platinum, it's I believe. Platinum, that's yes. right. And it's set with, with diamonds. Yes. I have had a look at it. I think it's sort of a 1920s, 1930s ring. Yeah. And one of its, its problems, as far as I can see, is the diamonds are not quite as clear as I would like them to be. Yeah. It has got a good hallmark, although somewhat rubbed. It does say, uh, I can see the AT of platinum very clearly, and the PL is rather vague. So yeah. it's been worn and loved and used and, you know, so, as yeah. rings should be. So I'm, I'm quite satisfied that it is platinum and that we're dealing with a, many diamonds have we got? A five diamond ring, albeit that the diamonds aren't as clear yeah. as I would like. So I'm going to make you an offer um, and we'll see how we go from there. Yeah. Okay. 20. 40. 60, 80, 1, 20, 40, 160 is where I see it. That's a really definite no, no, no. Am I near? A little bit. A, Just bit a little bit more? Yeah. I am prepared to do one more 10, so that's... So that's 170, and that's really where I want to leave it, I think. Are you sure I can't squeeze any more now? I, I, really I really think that I've reached where I want right. to be. Right. How do you feel about that? It's OK. You're yeah. happy to shake on that? Have we got a deal? Yes. <laughs> Thank you very Thank much. You. Thank you. Now, will Michael Hoffman be squeezed for those few extra pennies for this next lot? Jeff, uh, tell us about your squeeze box. It's actually my father's... My father plays a bit of keyboards as a pastime. Um, he had this given about 10 or 15 years ago. Played it for a little while and it's just been up in attic for about 10 years now and he's just thought it's about time to yeah. move on and let somebody else... Uh, a it's a bit of a dinosaur in the musical instrument world, isn't it? It is, yeah. A lot of people. Yeah. But there are players out there, you know, people like this sort of thing. Yeah. I reckon it dates to about 1940, 1950, and it's made by one of the best companies, Honda. Yeah. Which also made the mouth organs, yeah. the squeeze boxes. And they're sort of synonymous with this sort of chrome and a, a bit of glitter, really. But it's yeah. quite, um, pretty much bulk standard. What lets this one down a little bit is obviously the damage. Yeah, there is a little bit of damage on the yeah, corners. Yeah, both of these here. Don't know that. Make you an offer, though. OK. Let's see what we've got. <laughs> oh, we've done that one. That's got me £100 notes in it, David. Just while he's trying to get his money out of his pocket, sometimes Hoggy's fingers <laughs> swell up. Yeah. You know, and then he can't... Well, stuck. ..can't quite get his hands his right. Now, I looked at that, you know, and I thought, Hoggy, this could be you. Oh, <laughs> Me and you, Central Pay. Absolutely. Busking. You know, we could get a few quid doing this, yeah. you know. Underneath the arches. <laughs> down Paradise Lane. You know. Little walk ball. Get your money down. Come on. All right. <laughs> Quite a nice instrument, this. So, Jeff, I will make you an offer. Right. I hope you don't think I'm being mean, but it's, you know, damage lets it down for me, 20 quid. I think you might better do a little bit better than that. Oh, that's right. You must be having a laugh. That's what he says. You <laughs> must be having a laugh. <laughs> 20 quid. David is damaged. Where's the damage? Up here, look. It's all sellotaped up here. All sellotaped up here. It wants a bit of super glue on it. <laughs> <laughs> OK, 40 to 60 quid, that's what they're saying. Right. I look at this and think, God, it's cheaper, 40 to 60 quid. Come on, Hockey, it's worth a bit more than David. 20 quid. No, not 40 for me. to 60. It must yeah. be somewhere in the middle at least. I'd like this to go to auction. OK. Send it to auction. If it doesn't sell, you never know. The two of us, we might just have a go at it, so right. then it go to auction. OK, thank you. Jeff, I'll be honest with you, 20 quid is seriously what I really want to pay for it. I'd be lucky to get 40 quid for it if I did sell it, so we've got to make a little profit. 
Okay, we'll do so that. So auction? Then. I'll take it to auction. David will do a double with you. Okay, thanks duet. very much. Let's hope the auction brings Jeff more luck as his squeeze box goes under the gavel of auctioneer Rob Lee. On the dealer's day, you brought along a piano accordion. Where did it come from? It was my father's, but he had it passed on from somebody he knew. Uh, I think it was a, one of the family members. Now, you sat down with Michael Hogburn. Yeah, I did. Well, he offered you 20 quid. Yeah. What did you think about that offer? Um, I think it's worth a little bit more than £20. Oh, Michael, Michael, <laughs> Michael! It's got to be worth more than 20 quid. They're not yeah. easy to sell, and it may not sell today, but no. 20 quid's no good. OK, it's coming up now. Let's see what happens. 20 quid was turned down, 20 pounds was refused. Is it going to sell? Here it is. 25 pound is your opening bid. 30 pounds a master for it. 30 pound is that bid, sir? 30 pound, 35, 40. I'm out, who's on 45? 45 on the front, must be 50 elsewhere. Old and Howie at 45 pound, I'm just gonna drop. 45 pounds, we've got a bit of commission to take off. Take away the commission and you're going home with a real deal of 38 pounds. Is it enough? It is, yeah. Yeah, it's just been stuck in loft for a few years and my dad's just wanting it. It's no money, is it? I mean, when you no. think, it's a lovely instrument, mother yeah. of pearl, original case, uh, £38. Nevertheless, that is the real deal. Coming up, James reminisces about yesteryear. I'm amazed to see this, because I remember getting this mighty Antar for a birthday in about 1958. Uh... But will he be nostalgic enough to offer the big box? You're miles away. Am I? Yeah. Really? Miles away. Welcome back to Dickinson's Real Deal from the Royal Armouries Museum in Leeds. It's all go in the dealer's den and we're straight over to James Light. Richard, hello. Hello. Nice to meet you. Richard. I'm James. I'm amazed to see this because I remember getting this mighty Antar for a birthday in about 1958, 59, yeah. that kind of thing. But of course I threw my box away immediately. I'll say it's a box. <laughs> I'll give you a couple of quid for the box. No. I don't want the, don't want the lorry. Two knots on the end. <laughs> it has been played with, hasn't it? I mean, yeah. it's not in, not in perfect condition. And the box is a, is a bit scuffed. Can't remember how much these were at the time. They were something like 15 shillings. Oh something like that, yeah. But one had to save up quite a long time for them. I remember that much. And this is a crane, a goods yard crane. Good so that would have crane. gone with maybe a train, train set. set. Yeah, yeah. And also being played with, slightly scuffed, boxes seen better days. That's only worth a pound, that box, but I don't need that one. And this, I would think, is probably early 60s, that one. Yeah. Which looks in pretty good condition, it's really. Good nick is that. Yeah. So if you, you don't play with them anymore, you're... No. You're just looking to capitalise on your... Just to increase the pension fund. Increase the pension fund, yeah, we need that, don't we? Yeah. <laughs> we all need that. Right, well, let's have a go. You start with wrong colour. 10, 20, 30. Can I stop yet? No. Miles away. 40, 50 pounds. That's a nice run, some. You're miles away. Am I? Yeah. Well, I'm, I'm obviously richer than I thought with my, with my lorry. 10, 20, that's 70 pounds. No way. 80. I told you you started with the wrong colour money. You don't want that. That's, the, that's all I've got. I'm a very poor man. You're not going to take my, my money. No. Um, have you sold at auction before? Years so ago. So you, you know what to expect, more yeah. or less. But, of course, this time you'll have David there. Yeah. Interfering and making the punters wave their hands around. That's right. I hope you do really well. Good luck. Thanks, James. All right. Pleasure. <laughs> It's an emergency dash to auction for the fire engine and lorry. Now, on the dealer's day, Richard brought along two items that were dinky toys. He was offered £80 for the two items by James Late. He said, no, I think I'll gamble. I think I'll go to auction. Now, he can't make it to the auction, and I'm looking after his interests. The two items have been separated to try and maximise the price, 
Let's see what happens. First up is the low loader. It has to make a reserve of 80 quid. Is it going to make it? Let's find out. Forced to start the bidding at 55 pound, 60 I'm after. 65, 75, 80. I'm out. Who's on 85? 85 on the net, 90, sir. 95. Moon bid at 90, it's got to be 95. 95 pound bid on the internet. 100 pound is it? I'll give you a bit longer or anybody else. Untidy figure this, top it up to a ton. All done at 95. Hammer's going to drop. The gavel has gone down at 95 on the first slot. That was a good gamble. Coming up now is the fire engine. Reserve is £20. Must start the bidding at 15, 20 I'm after. £20, 25, it's got to be elsewhere. Must be 25 to move on. Central bid at 25, 30, 35. 35, moon bid on the internet. 40, sir. 35 with the interneters. Net bid at 35. I'll give you one more look. All done at 35 with the netters. The gavel has gone down at £35. The two items together, 95 for the low loader, 35 for the fire engine is 130 quid. Take away the commission, £110. That was the real deal, and we'll be sending that money on to you right away, Richard. Not a bad gamble. Next up, footy is the name of the game, but who will be on the winning side? Jonathan, pleased to, to meet you. I'm Helen. I see you're a little red devil, are oh, you? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now, red devils, what for? Manchester United? Manchester United, yeah. Ah, yeah. I'm learning, I'm learning. Mm. Tell me the story of this, Jonathan. Uh, well, basically, we bought a flat and the lady had died who lived there and she'd left everything in the flat. Yeah, you had to clear it out? Yeah, we had to clear it out, contacted the solicitor and he said, Told us to clear it all out, so yeah. So this is some this. of the things that yeah. were left. Yeah. Do yeah. you support Manchester United? Yes. yes in well, Leeds. why are you not keeping it? <laughs> I don't know. Just thought Look, I'd bring it along. You thought you'd bring it along. So it's a little cocktail set. Yeah. Little cocktail shaker, and three glasses. Was there any more glasses? Uh, yeah. There was one which I've mislaid. You've lost a glass. Yeah. I uh, don't know. The devil take the hindmost. So yeah. this is rather pretty. It looks like a 1950s set. I think it's copying an earlier Art Deco set. OK. So maybe 1950s, 1960s, maybe even a little later. It's certainly mid-20th century. So how much money do you want for your cocktail set, Jonathan? Uh, I'll let you be the... Uh, I'll let You're you not going to tell me, are no, you? No. Have you got an idea? Uh, yes. i put a little bit of money on the table okay. and you'll tell me when I've put enough down, yes. will you? 20 quid? No. It's up to you. Yes. Keep going. Well, cool. Keep going. <laughs> Forty pounds. I was wanting a bit more. I'll put another five pounds on the table and see if that can tempt you. Which is forty-five pounds. How about that for your cocktail set? No. You're probably thinking, Jonathan, is that enough money that's on the table? Is that what you think? Yeah. Well. It doesn't sound a great deal of money, but let me tell you, the independent value is the same 40 to 50. Okay. And in my opinion, if you went to a sale room, minus 15%, I'm fairly sure you wouldn't come away with much more than that's on the table. Okay. So, as always, I'm going to say, take the wee glasses of it <laughs> over the border where they belong uh, for a few tots and get them sold. You're a bit of a devil, David. <laughs> Well, I'll, you've, uh, you've yeah. heard you've heard David's advice. Yeah, I'll now, take his advice, I think. You're going to take his advice? Yeah. You're going to have my deal? I'll take your deal. OK, thank you very much. Thank you. Glad to meet you, you and thank too. you very much. Thank you. Bye-bye. <laughs> a win for the home team there. Now, will Debbie Serp will be a doll and make a play for this next one? June. Thanks so much for coming in. You brought this little doll with you. What can you tell me about her? Well, we've had her 37 years. I don't know how old she was before then, because we had it given from an old lady. Well, she was 18. It belonged to her daughter. I've had a little look at her, and her hands are in lovely condition. Mm. And very often, these, um, these parts of dolls um, 
are the things that deteriorate. If, if the head doesn't go, the hands get broken off because they're made of a different thing altogether, mm. which is more like a papier-mâché with a, um, a, co a coating on it. That's it. Typically, like all dolls of the turn of the last century, which is the sort of period at which I would put her mm. at, she has um, a mark on the back of her head, which is exactly what um, a, a dealer would always check, check for. Yeah. And you, you said she's got she's called Gloria. Baby Gloria, it says on the back. And is that what you called her? Or yes, you, no, yeah. we didn't name she's her. Always, she's always been Baby Gloria. Baby Gloria, because she's been named Gloria, and I believe that um, is a model um, made by Armand Marseille mm. in Germany, the, the very, very famous doll making mm. factory. Do you know anything about no, the clothing? No, at nothing. All? No, they just came. They was with the doll mm. and we. She had it given. Well, it is quite possible that the clothes are children's clothes, period children's mm. clothes. Although you, someone might argue they're rather small, people were so much smaller in those days. Well, I like her and um, I, I shall try and buy her. Right. But um, you. obviously you always have that option of well, going, yes. to, uh, <laughs> going to auction. 50. £70. How do you think about that, no. June? See if I can... 80. Now, bear in mind with 80, you've got to pay 15% at the auction. Mm -hmm. So in order to end up with 80 in your hand, she's mm -hmm. got to sell at around 100. Yeah. Could you do a little bit more? I'll do another five and that'll be my lot. So that's £85. That's really going to be my final offer. Right. Well, if that's final offer, I'll accept it. Thanks, June. That's lovely. Thanks very much. It's going to a good home. Yeah, all right. I hope okay. so. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Coming up is James losing his touch. £80. No. Do you ever say yes? No. <laughs> well, I'll, I'll give up. I'll give up. Welcome back to Dickinson's Real Deal from Yorkshire. The people of Leeds have been bringing in their antiques and collectibles in abundance. Now back to James's table. Will his offer be weighty enough to seal his next deal? Michael, hello. Hello. Nice to are you meet you, right? James. Nice to meet you. So what have you brought along? This lovely sphinx. I think it's a doorstop, I'm not exactly sure. I don't think it's quite heavy enough for a doorstop. I just right, think it's okay. more likely to be a paperweight. Yeah, is it Victorian, is it? It's just about Victorian. I think it's yeah. very late 19th century. Yeah. 1880, 1890, that kind of thing. I think it's bronze rather than brass. It's got quite a nice patination. And you can see where it's slightly rubbed there. Oh, yeah. It's a more of a bronzy colour than a brass colour. You haven't yeah. dusted it recently, have you? No. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> Why is well, that? it's a friend of mine's, but it wouldn't come on today. Well, it's, not, it's not yours? Yes. Oh, I see. Oh. So what this is, I think, is, a, is either an Assyrian or a Babylonian god. It's kind of like a sphinx. Yeah. And I think this probably reflects the, the interest in the archaeology at the time. Yes. So quite nice quality. I mean, it's not a, it's not a fantastically saleable object because of, yeah. because of its subject matter. It doesn't appeal to everybody. Yeah. But it's all right. So do you know why your friend wants to sell it? Has his dad paid nothing for it? Well, he's open for something. For something. I yeah. know how much it's worth. Well, I've got an idea what it's You've worth. You've got an idea. I've got an idea as well. Yeah. So we'll see if our ideas coincide, shall we? Yes. I'll put a bit of money on the table. There we go. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60 pounds, Mike. No. I took a bit of thinking about it, so I'm close. No. 70, 80 pounds, Michael. No. Do you ever say yes? No. <laughs> well, this is my last gamble. Look, ninety pounds. That's as far as I'm going. It's okay. either that. It's either yeah. that or, or go to auction. Ninety. ninety You're happy with the ninety? Yeah. yeah. Sure. Yes. You don't want to go to auction? No. All right. That Thank you very much good. for bringing it along. Yeah. You do say yes. Yes. <laughs> His 
Hockey tying himself up in knots with this item. Norman, where's your tie? I don't wear them. But how many have you got of these? 246, I believe. And tell me about them, please. I'm a bus driver, well, ex-bus driver from Leeds, and uh, over the years, in uh, 1979, when I started, I started collecting them. So it's a collection <clears throat> built up by yourself. That's right. Over the years of every single tie which you could accumulate from... From transport, coach stations, transport, transports. transport. Why are you selling them now, then? Well, I've just retired. Yeah. And uh, I don't really want anything to do with uh, transport, to be quite honest now. And where, where do you see a buyer of this? I, I thought that these people outside, you know, what would want to get hold of these sort of ties for yeah. a collection of theirs. I reckon there could be a market for it, but that market's not me. I, I'm going to say to you, with that amount of ties, with that specialist subject you've got going on, take them to auction. Yeah. Because whatever I offered you wouldn't be enough, mm. you know. David might buy a couple. He loves a tie. Does he? Oh, I'm, I'm on your fence. I don't wear a tie. I'm going to do now and again. Yeah. Not all the time. If I go to a wedding or something like that, I will. Keep one for memorabilia. Anyway, I wish you all the luck. Thank you, anyway. Really Thanks for the money. We'll take them at auction. That'll be great. Yeah, I think you've got to enjoy it. it. Will that specialist collector be in the sale room? Over to David. Do you think they're going to sell? Do you think there's going to be someone here in this sale room in Sheffield that's going to buy 240 transport ties? Well, you never know. I've collected them. Well, you've just said that, Norman. You've hit it on the nail on the head. You collected them. And I've got a feeling there will be someone here. I don't think they'll make a lot of money, but I think they're going to sell. Let's see what happens. They're coming up now. £45 in open bid. 50 I'm out straight away. It's got to be 55 elsewhere to move on. 55 pound it needs to be to progress. 50 pound only, they're going to go. 50 pound bid with the netters. Any advance? One last look. Hammer's dropping at 50. OK, we've got 50 pounds. It's about 42 pounds to come back after commission. Yeah, that's fine. What do you think about that? I think it's great. You pleased? Yeah, yeah of course I am. OK, Norman says he's quite happy. £50 under the gavel, about 42 quid to take home. That is the real deal. Norman's happy. I'm satisfied as well. Certainly am. Back over to the dealer's den. Will Debbie serve up a good deal? Hi, Gaynor. Hi. Thanks so much for coming on the show. You're welcome. I can see quite clearly you bought a, a pair of silver spoons with you. How have you come to own them? Uh, the one my great-grandma's... She passed away about seven years ago, and we just had a clear out and found them and been in a, under the bed right. since <laughs> in a box. So we thought we'd. So you don't you don't use it? No. So you, you don't use silver at all? No. Generally, it, funnily enough, you either do or you don't. Yeah. You, you love cleaning it and you love using it, or you simply don't. And. As you know, in today's market, it's worth something just in its sheer value of the metal in yeah. which it's been made. On the back of the, the spoon, they're marked, um, and they've got a Newcastle mark and DD as a maker's mark, and that's uh, David Darling, who is a maker um, at the beginning of the 19th century. Do you know what their function was? No. No idea. Well, they've been made by the Victorians into what you call berry spoons. They would have started their life as a very, very simple spoon. This, this pattern here is, is called a rat tail. Um, so they're an early spoon that's been later elaborated by the Victorians. I've weighed them, and what I'm going to do is make you an offer based on their weight. Okay, 20. 40. 60 pounds. How do you feel about that? I a bit more. A little bit more. I'm prepared to put down a little bit more. That's 70 pounds. 
Now, if you were to get £70 in auction, you've got to make 15% on top of that. Yeah. Okay. Sorry, David, I'm treating them as scrap, I'm afraid. That okay. dreaded well, word. Scrap is £80, believe it or not. 80 to 120 is the estimation. If you go to auction, it's a bit of a gamble. They do scrap at £80, and I'm not advocating we scrap those. Yeah. 80 to 120, you would have thought you'd get a little bit more, but there is a 15% to take out. Gamble, maybe get a few quid more, but it won't be a lot more. The ball's in your court. What do you want to do? I'll take the money. You'll take the money. Wise choice. Thank you. Well done. Thank you. <laughs> Coming up, a treasure chest of gold is unveiled on Helen's table. This is some hoard of gold. We have no idea the value or Amazing. anything. So just how much is it all worth? <laughs> Welcome back to Dickinson's Real Deal from Leeds. We're over with Helen and her table is laden with treasure. But will she be able to add this next lot to her collection? Cliff. Cliff. I'm delighted to meet you. Delighted to meet you, yes. Now, Cliff, how did you come by all this gold? I used to look after the lady next door. Yes. And then the old lady went into town and she had a fall. Oh, dear. Break her hip and so on. Anyway, when she did return back to the house, the social service decided that she wouldn't, she wouldn't, wouldn't be able to. Wouldn't get it to. back. Yeah, and she couldn't. So she decided to sell the house and she went into a home. And then she asked us to clear the clear it out. Uh, out. Mm. And then we found this box with these things in. And she said she's no idea what it is. I know if they value anything, she don't think so. So I should take them. So yes. we just kept them. We have no idea mm. the value or Amazing. anything. Yeah. We just they were there. What a fantastic story. Mm. The, this is an amazing amount of gold. What are you gonna do with all this money? We may be going on a cruise. Go on a cruise. Yeah. Well, that would be fabulous. Uh, yeah. That would be fabulous. The thing about gold is it's quite high just now, and you've got wonderful coins, coins, which would be a shame to scrap. It really would be a shame to scrap these because coin collectors would want them, and the weight of gold would ensure that people would put those put away for a rainy for day. Yeah. Now, I don't think I'm going to make a bid on this gold because it's an awful lot of money, yeah. and I don't know that I can afford Lord. to buy all this gold. But I do advise you to think about what you want to do with it because this won't come again. And this is solid, solid oh, money. OK. Now, you've heard what Helen says, yes. and I respect Helen, and I think the advice is very good. You have got here, should we look purely at the intrinsic value of the gold, about £8,600. Yeah. We know the value of the gold we are saying go to the auction the auctioneer has kindly said to me that because of this particular case and because of the size and the amounts involved he will waive his commission so there will be Lucky no you. there will be no commission <laughs> deducted and he will not necessarily do this on other occasions on the show but on this particular case he will waive uh, the deduction of his commission. Helen's been very fair. I'm going to say, let's go to the auction. Let's get it on. Yeah. Let's see if we can get that money. And let's get that Caribbean music going, man. Fantastic. Yes. Yes. Oh, That's it. Yeah. I hope you have a okay. fabulous cruise. And I hope we will do. they do really, really well, well in auction for you. You deserve it. OK. Earlier, we saw Helen decline to make an offer on Cliff's treasure trove of gold. He's off to auction where he hopes it will fetch a pretty penny. Now, Clifton, on the dealer's day, you came along and brought a large collection of gold. A real variety of items, coins, all manner of things. What we have done with these things, we have split them into six individual lots. The reason for that is to try and get you the very best price. Let's see what happens. Force is out of the bidding at 190. 200 pounds, 210, 220. It's with me at 210. It's just below the reserve. Anybody fancy 220? With me at 210, Aldenawi at 210. 
210 it made, but it, but did not sell because 220 was the reserve. Okay, it's early days. Let's see what happens. Must start the bidding at 210, 220. I'm after. Anybody fancy 220? Any advance? Old and Elliot, 210. That is not selling as well. Don't panic because this is gold and there's no worry about it. Forced to start the bidding here at 1450. 1500 and after 1550, 1600, 50, 1700, 1700 pound gentleman seats at so far. That's at the reserve. Yeah. Any advance are gonna go? Comfy chair bid at 1700 pounds. Have we finished? That's 1700 pounds. The first two sovereigns did sell. Let's see what the next lot is. Must start the bidding here at 270, 280, it's gonna be 280, 290, 300 now. I'm out. 310, it's gotta be. 3, 310, new bid. 320, sir. 330. 320, original bidder. 320. Anybody else for 330? One last look. All done now, we're at 320 in the comfy chair. That's sold at 320 pounds. So we're now at 2,020 pounds. And this next lot is 3,500 to 3,800, a case set of four proof medals. Forced to start the bidding at 3,000 pounds. 31, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35. Anybody else for 3,600 pounds? Central bid at 35, any advance they're going to go? All done at 3,500 pounds. I make that £5,520, and we're going on again now. This one is three cased medals again, 1500 to 1800 Forced to start the bid in here at £1,200. 1300 I'm after, 1300 1400 1500 50 80 1500 I'm out, £1,500 bid. Anybody else at £1,550? We're moving on. All done at £1,500. Have we finished? Hammer's gonna drop. Gabba's gone down at £1,500 for that. That's £1,500 on top of that. And that makes £7,020. Can I have your, your impression, uh, Clifton? What do you think about that? This is, was a real, real Dickinson deal. Are you happy? I'm happy about it. Very happy. Clifton's going on a cruise with his £7,020. What a deal. Yeah. You heard what he said. What is it? Real deal. Real deal. Real That's deal. what we call it, man. A real it's deal. A real deal. What a result. But how about our dealers have the same success? Marie and Helen, pleased, pleased to meet you. you. And um, can't keep my eyes off your Clara's Cliff here. And it didn't stay in Helen's shop for long either. It was snapped up by a dealer earning her a £10 profit. You haven't dusted it recently, have you? After James dusted off those cobwebs, the bronze paperweight flew out of the door for a weighty price of £140, bringing in a profit of 50. You said she's, got, she's called Gloria. Baby Gloria, it says on the back. And is that what you called her? Or yes, you, no, yeah. we didn't name she's her always, and She's always been Baby Gloria. Baby Gloria. <laughs> Baby Gloria caught the eye of a collector who was happy to part with £100 for her. As you know, in today's market, it's worth something just in its sheer value of the metal in yeah. which it's been made. But Debbie bought the silverberry spoons to be passed on and not scrapped, and that is exactly what she managed to do, earning a £30 profit. So that's £170, and that's really where I want to, to leave it, I think. However, a jewellery dealer was prepared to go a little further, paying Debbie £220 for the ring, making her a great profit of 50. But our no, real Cliff. winner of the day is Cliff. This is some hoard of gold. After being rewarded for his kindness and hospitality towards his elderly next door neighbour, Cliff took Helen's advice to go to auction. The cell room was dazzled by his gold coins. Cliff deservedly takes home a fabulous £7,020. Wow. We've had a great day here in Yorkshire. There's been bags of action, lots of buying, lots of selling. That's what I like to see. Don't forget to join me, David Dickinson, next time for Dickinson's Real Deal. Bye for now.